Welcome to Life Talk. I'm Mark Crutcher, president of Life Dynamics, and joining me as usual is my trusty sidekick, Renee Hobbs. And back again to help us out this week is Stephen Broden from Fair Park Bible Church. Hello, Stephen. Good to be with you again. Be with us. Lots of things have been going on in the pro-life movement. Of course, the biggest thing is the Supreme Court's rejection of the regulations on abortion clinics passed by the state of Texas. Well, I've had a lot of calls from people who said that they're discouraged by this and, you know, they're, they're depressed by it and so forth. Um, I want to make people understand something. and Don't think that, that these people are going away licking their wounds and not going to do anything. This is coming back. They're going to keep on mm-hmm. coming back with new things. So don't be discouraged about this. This is a setback. Right. And, you know, we're in this thing for the long haul. We're going to be here till the, till the last baby's killed. You know, we're not going to stop until these people quit, quit butchering these babies. And this is a setback, and it's no different than in a, in a football game. You know, the team that's ahead might fumble the ball and give up, you know, one series of downs or whatever. But you still come back, and you're gonna, we're going to continue to fight. Well, and also, the Supreme Court justices, they don't have the final say-so. We can still fight as citizens and right. push to— to push more regulations. And Absolutely. It's, right. it's not the end. It's not the end of the world. Right. They didn't stop when we defeated them on this issue. Right. They kept right on fighting, and so we must do the same. Yes, absolutely. we got to fight harder than they fight. Right. That's, that's the and problem. smarter. And smarter than they fight. Speaking of that, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the most godless, radical leftist that ever sat on any court in the United States, bar none, and she's now been out unbelievably unlike any other Supreme Court justice has ever done, pushing uh, Hillary Clinton over over Trump and making some horrible statements about Trump. And, of course, she's had to now come back and walk it back a little bit because she got a lot of criticism even from her fellow godless leftist mm-hmm. over doing that. The Supreme Court's not supposed to do that. And she said she and her late husband, Martin Ginsburg, said if Trump's elected, quote, now it's time for us to move to New Zealand. I say, don't let the door hit you in the rear end going on out, right? <laughs> that's putting right. up lightly. That's, that's, the, that's the cleaned up version of it. Yes. But, you know, she was talking about how proud she was at the court for striking down the Texas regulations that would have made abortion clinics have to adhere to the same standards as other outpatient surgical centers. And she said that if they had been put in place, quote, desperate women then would be driven to unsafe abortions. Well, first off, that's not the purview of the Supreme Court. That's not what they're there for. That's a political decision. All she's there supposedly to determine is whether a particular law is constitutional or not, not whether it, not what its ramifications might be, mm-hmm. but what it, whether it's constitutional or not. Mm-hmm. And that statement right there proves that she, this woman does not understand this. This woman should have never been on the Supreme Court to start with, and she certainly shouldn't be there today. But. Well, and you made a comment that she may hang on until we see what happens and she yet made a comment on that article saying that she is not going to go anywhere right and there's two others that may retire within the next presidential right eight years and she's basically saying what i've been predicting is that they're going to hang on because if trump is elected mm-hmm. she doesn't want him appointing her replacement right of course the woman is in her 80s right but and she's obviously losing her thinking capacity whatever thinking capacity she ever had well uh, uh, let's get it clear she's not the only one who's operating outside of the the scope and definition of the constitutional duty specified to the supreme court right she's not the lone ranger here there are no about four of them on there that are doing yes. that yeah, that's right. There are. And, you know, we've, we've had discussions about that here on the, on the show before. Uh, you know, just, just to recap on that particular, particular issue, and let me tell you something. This election, whatever else you think about Trump and Clinton and the whole thing and what all's happening with the Republicans and the Republican conventions going on the week that we were taping this, the fact is the, the issue here, more than any other single issue, is the Supreme Court. That's what's at, that's what's at stake here. Because electing a president for four years, who that president puts on the Supreme Court might last for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So that's why this this election is so important. But we're in trouble in this country as as a result of the Supreme Court. You know, most people don't realize the judicial system was seen by our founding fathers as being the one with the most potential for causing harm. So they gave it the least amount of power. And yet today, the, the courts have more power than the other branches of government. That's the most powerful branch of government. We've turned this thing completely upside down. And we did that starting in 1913. Most people don't even realize that before 1913, the United States Senate was an appointed body 
not an elected body. That's why they're the ones who pass on Supreme Court nominations, because the founding fathers did not want the Supreme Court to be political. The moment we started electing our Senate rather than appointing it, we made the Supreme Court political, and that's where we are today. Mm -hmm. And m my view is that this idea that you put somebody on the Supreme Court and they're there forever has what, what became an anachronism the moment we started electing the Senate. That needs to change. Mm -hmm. My view is that what we ought to have is the Supreme Court, if we're going to have it under this current system, if we're not going to go back to the old original system that our founding fathers created, I think the Supreme, a Supreme Court justice ought to be appointed for, let's say, 10 years and then have to stand for a retention election by the American people. Then they're not there just for life. They must stand for a retention election to keep them on the Supreme Court. I agree well, they shouldn't that. be there for life. And I think even in the Constitution now, when they perform in a way that is inconsistent with the duty specified to it within the Constitution, that's grounds for dismissal or impeachment. Sure it is. It's just that we do not have the kind of constitutional responsibilities coming out of the other two branches that would take that duty responsible to remove those who are operating outside the scope of the, of the definition specified within the Constitution. And so we're unconstitutional all the way around. Right, exactly. And listen, there's no guarantee that because we have a Republican that's going to take the office as President of the United States that we're going to get what we want on that Supreme Court. No, some of the Justice that, Kennedy right. isn't a Republican appointee. Justice Stevens is a Republican appointee. Right. Breyer right. is a Republican appointee. We who are Christians, we need to be praying that the right persons be appointed to that position when and if Donald Trump is indeed elected and that he will have around him advisors who will advise him as to who should take those positions. And he otherwise, yeah. otherwise we can get the same old mess. We think, well, yeah, the, yeah we've, we've been stabbed in the back by Republicans right. as much as we've been stabbed in the chest by Democrats. You know, that's one of the standard sayings that I've said for years. But That's a good saying. Yeah, it but is it's right. true. It is true. Well, and Trump did say that he would put on pro-life justices, but yeah, that's right. But at the same worse. time, he's announcing to us that Planned Parenthood does good things. That's right. right. Exactly. That's we can't story. forget that one. Hey guys, if you want a powerful speaker for your next pro-life event, someone who can deliver a hard-hitting, inspirational message, I've got a deal for you. Mark is now available for a limited number of engagements, and if you watch Life Talk or read his articles, you already know his unique perspective on the pro-life battle is like no one else's. If that sounds like what you're looking for, just call me, Renee Hobbs, at 940 380-8800 between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday. You can also reach me by email at renee at prolifeamerica.com. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Together, you and I are going to make your banquet or convention one that people will be talking about for years. Let's talk some more about uh, pro-abortion hypocrisy in the courts. Supreme Court is not going to take up a case in Seattle that its conscience clause prevents pharmacists from being forced to sell abortifacient drugs. And so now the lower court ruling is going to apparently stand in that deal. And so pharmacists are going to be forced to either quit their jobs, give up their career, or sell abortifacient drugs. Um, this infuriates me. <laughs> yeah. It really does. When there's pharmacies all around that people can go to, to other pharmacies, they don't have to use that one pharmacist. Well, this person that said, I won't fill these prescriptions, they brought a lawsuit against him, and now he's either going to lose his job or he's going to have to actually, very, uh, in reality, participate in abortions by mm -hmm. providing the drugs. They're admitting that they couldn't find one example of a woman anywhere in the state who was mm -hmm. denied the ability to buy these drugs because this guy wouldn't do it. There was always somebody right. a half a block away yeah, that would do it. Around the corner. Right. And he's a third generation pharmacist. It's right. It's it's sad. It's obscene. But again, where what happened to the concept of choice? I thought this was not about abortion, this was about choice. That's what we've been told for the last forty something years. Why aren't the pro abort saying, Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy has a right not to choose not to participate if he wants to. Where what happened to choice in that deal? There's no choice. Can you explain that? Stephen? Well, it's, uh, that's never they're been liars. the case. It's never been the case. That's right. not why they're in this. This is eugenics plot, right. and they're trying to control population, and they're going to force that on this 
on our culture, on our society. The same thing is happening with the president forcing hospitals right now to perform abortions or lose federal dollars. Yep. Do transgender uh, uh, operations or lose federal dollars. We're looking at a manifestation of a, an agenda that is being foisted upon us by our government, which is tyranny. Well, you know, it, it kind of goes back to something that happened here in Texas when Texas took funds away from Planned Parenthood. And the government said, if you take funds away from Planned Parenthood, we're not going to give you the funds to distribute to anyone. And Rick Perry said, okay, keep your funds. We've got enough money that Texas will fund our health care clinics. And by the way, we're not seeing women drop dead in the streets as a result of this, like they claimed it would happen. Not one bit. But they said, you know, we got enough money. We'll just, we'll just fund it ourselves. And Texas gave up like $10 billion a year in federal funding so that they didn't have to give it to Planned Parenthood. The problem that you have, though, is that every state is not as wealthy as Texas and won't physically won't be able to do that, won't be able to make a decision like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other problem is that you may have a governor of Texas one day who doesn't have the courage to stand up and say, just keep your money. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll fund it ourselves. And that's why we're dependent upon our lesser magistrates to exercise their duty to nullify all unconstitutional acts. And when one state does that, it becomes an example to the others. Right. And if enough of the states will nullify these unconstitutional acts, then I think we have an opportunity to change our federal government's agenda. You might not be able to change their agenda, but you'll be able to change their behavior. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their agenda will still, the same, still say the same. Well, if we change out the uh, elected officials, it can change the yes, agenda, too. Yes, it certainly too. can. But now, you're, you're right. That we've got, um, in Washington state, a Superior Court judge there has ruled that uh, hospitals must provide abortions, must provide. And again, the pro-aborts who say this is not about abortion, this is about people having individual choice, mm -hmm. they're not saying a word about this. They're on the other side. Mm -hmm. Sure. They're pushing this. Exactly. Um, more hypocrisy from these people. Uh, Congress was taking up the issue of allocating a lot of money to deal with this uh, Zika they, they're trying to prevent an epidemic. It's not right. an epidemic. They're trying, trying to prevent right. one. And they were going to release $1.1 billion to fight the Zika virus. But guess what? <laughs> the pro-aborts held this up and defeated it because it didn't give money to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about what happened. Now, and the press never said a word about this. Mm -hmm. Never said a word about this. But here's what happens. If you think about what the Democrats were saying and the pro-aborts were saying, Yes, this, this Zika thing is dangerous, and it could, it could cause all kinds of health problems for unborn babies. It could kill women. It could do this, that, and the other. But we'd rather see those women die and those babies be mangled yes. if you're not going to give money to Planned Parenthood. That was the point that's, I was going to make. That's exactly what they're saying, right? That is. That's precisely what yeah. they're saying. Like they don't get enough tax dollars from us daily anyways, but... On almost, two billion, almost $2 million a day. Yeah. And then this, on top of that, when we, this could have gone to something that we needed. Yeah, so they're, what they're good. literally saying is, we don't care if those women die. We don't care what, these, uh, what happens to these little babies. These babies are born with um, this condition that causes their heads to be real small and their brains to be small and they have problems. We don't care about that. What we care about is making sure that if you're going to study that, you give some of that money to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. th th this is obscene. It is obscene. These people are... But we're not surprised, are we? No, we're not. I don't know about you. I'm not. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. Good show, guys. Thanks for joining Thank us you. again. You bet. Stephan, we appreciate your being here, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. We're here to win because winning is how the killing stops. We'll see you next week.